Jim Cramer, the host of CNBC's Mad Money, may be the most accurate stock picker of all time if your goal is to lose money in the stock market. Kramer is known for his humorously brash opinions on the market, which have grown increasingly controversial over the years. Uh, it really is true that uh, Kathy Wood is the kiss of death. And, you know, you don't usually don't want to say that, but um, Kim, she's awful. This is simply because, in most cases, stocks move in the opposite direction that Kramer predicts, a pattern that is shockingly reliable. Many are calling this the Kramer effect. If you choose to follow Kramer's stock picks, history shows that you would regret it. However, this has also birthed an inverse Kramer strategy. Do the opposite of what Kramer says and get easy returns in the market. Let's take a look back at Kramer's stock picking track record, then dive into a couple of inverse Kramer ETFs and strategies you can implement today that have historically beat the market. Kramer's impressively bad picks. Kramer's stock predictions can be found on a variety of platforms, including Twitter and CNBC's YouTube channel. This year alone, he has made close to 900 predictions. Among his worst was his call out to buy Netflix on January 3rd, 2022. One month later, Netflix had dropped 32% to $405. Netflix continued declining to $390 three months later. And then six months later, Netflix hit $185. In other words, anybody who bought Netflix on the day that Jim Cramer recommended the stock would currently be down 69% on their initial investment. Another tweet simply said Coinbase to 475. This tweet was posted on April 14th, 2021, just two days before the stock's IPO. Coinbase opened at $342 and then quickly dropped. Like Netflix, that decline continued over a few months until hitting about $147 nearly one year later. Again, a whole 69% below Kramer's target price. These are two small examples of Kramer's most infamous picks, which show the magnitude of how wrong his picks can be. Kramer's recurring recommendations. For another perspective, we can look at the stocks he mentions the most. Walt Disney has a total of 22 buy recommendations from Kramer since February 23rd of this year. At the time of writing, Disney is down 29%. Qualcomm has a total of 16 buy recommendations and is down nearly 29%. Halliburton Company, Meta Platforms, and Morgan Stanley each received 14 buy calls from Kramer. They're down about 23%, 19%, and 17% respectively. Finally, Marvell Tech is down almost 32% after many callouts by Kramer. Although these stock picks only represent a small number of his callouts in 2022, the data seems to clearly illustrate a severe recent history of underperformance. Kramer's COVID-19 Broad Index CNBC provides further data by tracking the performance of all of Jim's top recommendations since COVID-19, calling it the Kramer COVID-19 Broad Index. Clearly, the performance is not stellar with only about a 16% gain since inception. This is even worse considering the performance of the S&P 500 or the Nasdaq index over the same period, up nearly 33 and 40% respectively. And this is exactly why so many are starting to follow the inverse Kramer strategy. If he's so good at being wrong, there's probably still something valuable there. So when he says buy, like he has for Costco, Alphabet, or Airbnb, maybe it's time to sell or short the stock. When he says sell, like he has for Roblox, Nvidia, or Amazon, maybe it's time to enter a long position. However, it would be much easier to adopt an ETF or indexing strategy than tracking all of his individual picks. Luckily, there are a few inverse Kramer strategies that have already done that for us. Our first inverse Kramer strategy comes from Quiver Quantitative on Seeking Alpha. Their strategy tracks the performance of companies that have received the most recommendations by Jim Kramer. The performance is tracked by opening a short position in the most recommended positions against a long position in the market index. The portfolio is equally weighted and is rebalanced on a weekly basis. Since inception on January 1st of 2021, Quiver Quant's inverse Kramer strategy has generated a compound annual growth rate of 26.18%. The current one year return is just over 20%, which is still favorable compared to the S&P 500's nearly 7% decline. Our next inverse Kramer strategy comes from Unusual Whales. They track both a pro Kramer index, which follows Kramer stock picks and their directional calls, and the inverse Kramer index, which shorts everything Kramer buys, sells everything Kramer holds, and buys anything he sells or mentions negatively. Interestingly, the index holds all short positions over its lifetime. Long positions are closed after six months of holding. Furthermore, this inverse Kramer portfolio is never rebalanced or adjusted despite the rules we just outlined. So this is an easy enough methodology to copy and execute yourself. At the time of writing, the inverse Kramer index holds six stocks spread across 25 positions. 
Some of the best performing positions include shorting Zoom, which dropped from about $296 on September 9th, 2021, producing a return of about $75. Another strong performer was shorting Zotus, ticker ZTS, which was trading at about $212 on January 1st, 2022. This short position netted nearly a $30 return per share. Now, this ETF only tracks performance as far back as a six-month period, but these returns speak for themselves. The inverse Kramer index has a return of 13.5%, while the pro Kramer index, which follows both his calls and their directions, has a negative return of negative 32.88%. Our last inverse strategy actually comes from an SEC filing that intends to bring the first official inverse Kramer ETF to the market. In early October, Tuttle Capital Management, the same investment advisor behind the short ARC ETFs, filed for both short and long Jim Cramer ETFs. If approved, the short Cramer or inverse Cramer ETF will trade under SJIM or SJIM. As outlined by their investment strategies, the goal with SJIM is to do the opposite of what Cramer publicly recommends on his Twitter account and on CNBC. It will do this by short selling or by using derivatives in order to get a negative correlation to Kramer's recommendations. It will also go long on the positions that Kramer is negative on. The fund's goal is to hold 20 to 25 positions equally weighted. They aim to churn through holdings pretty quickly, looking to hold positions no longer than a week in most cases, unless Kramer repeats his stance over longer periods of time. Importantly, the fund expects a high turnover rate, which could be costly for investors. Furthermore, this active management will likely come with a management fee in the ballpark of 1%, so that's worth keeping an eye on too. However, both Quiver Quantitative and Unusual Whales prove that this kind of strategy does indeed work. The biggest potential difference is that SGM will only hold positions for a week, while the previous strategies might hold them for much longer, which could be a key differentiator in the performance of these strategies. In any case, the data shows that this will definitely be an ETF to keep an eye out for if it gets approved for launch in December 2022. In the meantime, the easiest way to inverse Kramer might just be to buy the stocks that he hates the most, especially for us retail investors who might not have access to short selling. And if you don't feel like tuning in to CNBC every day to get his latest recommendations, you can find them all across a number of Kramer tracking Twitter accounts. The best follow is likely at Kramer Tracker. Their official mantra is tracking the stock recommendations of Jim Kramer, so you can do the opposite. You'll find timely calls like this after Kramer told audiences to quote, plug their noses and buy something. All companies in the S&P 500 index dropped significantly. While no stock trader can get 100% of their calls right, Kramer has sure made a habit of getting things wrong. As one of the most recognizable faces on CNBC, it seems that Kramer has become a lighthouse of sorts. He lights up the investing world, and if you know how to listen, tells you what to avoid. Even though his callouts may not always be profitable, it may be in our best interest as investors to pay attention to which companies he talks about, because they're probably going to move just in the opposite direction that he says. Thanks for watching and check out this video here for some rock solid dividend ETFs.